Guys, I have another issue with the uh, Ascot, and let me show you. But I had it all sorted out, but nope, I go to start it today. Let's uh, give it a try. I'm actually charging the battery because it won't start. And you hear that noise? And the headlight won't come on. So I have my little portable battery here. All right, so I got the battery pack on there. It is on. And it starts up. So the battery died. But now I'm looking at the headlight. And the headlight won't power on over my battery here. So once you remove it, this is such a handy thing to, to have. Battery. So it's either I have a bad battery or... The, I guess, alternator that feeds the battery is not working. But that also doesn't explain why my headlight is not powering on. It's, yeah, look at that, nothing. So I'm going to have to pull out the uh, bulb again and look at it. But the bike is running. I usually like to turn off the uh, fuel and just let it run. I mean, the bike is beautiful. You know, the only issue is that it does have little issues here and there. But the starting issue, I wonder if it's just the battery that's really low. It could be uh, something else that I don't quite know, but... So it's ready to kind of go for a little bit of a spin. It's not smoking either. Hey, my headlight went on. Oh, what the hell? High beam works. What? You see, there's something up with the electrics here. I guess the battery is just so low that it's not really doing much. Yeah, I think I might have a problem with the electrics. Just, maybe it's not charging. But that's how it goes. If I turn it off and turn it back on. Yeah, you see, like, it's the symptoms of a bad battery or, um, you know, a dead battery. But I'm not exactly sure what is happening because it's a new battery. It should work. Why isn't it working? So, the Ascot woes continue. But I'm still very happy with it. You know, it's uh, next to my Honda SH150. And even though this is a very light bike, if you move the SH, it's like, wow, this is a really light bike. But this one is so super light compared to this behemoth. This is a super heavy bike, but it's got a lot of bells and whistles that are really nice to have these days. You know, I don't really like to have bells and whistles in bikes. You know, they kind of detract a little bit from the experience. So if I ever feel like I want to... Um, to ride something simple boom right here doesn't get simpler the interesting thing too is that the ascot in 1983 it was considered very technological advanced it had liquid cooling it had a v-twin a shaft drive the suspension was really nice so this bike was very well sorted out for a 1983 bike and of course with technology you start to develop some of these I'm already looking at other bikes to, um, to buy because I want to get a few more over the winter. You know, you always get the best deals in the winter. And I think that's why I want to just get maybe two or three or four more bikes. And then like in the summer, I'll probably like sell them. But I just kind of like to try things out and show you guys what the, uh, the whole bike life thing is. It's like a time capsule that people need to see very cool gauges very industrial i am trying to remove this it's kind of nice it's a united states marine corps thing but i really just want to remove it i don't i don't like when people like put stuff on the tank or anywhere keep it in stock that's what i want